So Dr. Hawk, uh, tell us about your early childhood. Uh, what was your education like? Um, how did this sure. inspire you? I was you? Uh, born and brought up in a small village, Kazichak, in Muzaffarpur, Bihar. And uh, that was the place where there was no facility available for studying. My father was a teacher in a madrasa, so he used to take me to the madrasa. And my early age main thing was there. my father had no money. So that's why I had to go there. And I learned there and uh, my childhood education was uh, there with my father. My mother taught me um, all the good things of life and I think uh, the person behind my success is oh, my You mother. are from an Urdu background and you have your PhD in Urdu. Uh, why did you choose to write your debut novel? That's the good question. Everybody asks me this question that you have done your PhD in Urdu and you studied all of your life Urdu and you did not write your first novel in Urdu. Why? Uh, the, the simple thing is like I am with you, you are American and you are my boss at Dynamic Training Services and like you I have many friends from US and uh, from many different countries we have uh, friends. But I wanted to tell my story to many different friends from different countries and uh, the thing is uh, I cannot I cannot uh, tell my story to my friends from outside of the country I can tell my story only to the Urdu people so I thought if I'm writing story I should tell it to everybody in the world and I think English is the good medium to tell the story to everybody in the world. Okay. And now let's get some feedback from another side of the world. Uh, could you tell us uh, who you are, where you're from, and what were your expectations when you first uh, received this book? Okay, I am Shelby, and I am from California in the United States. I came across this book um, when I came to visit Delhi, and I got the um, opportunity to work in an English, um, an English school called Dynamic, who um, Dr. Hawk. Uh, Dr. Hawk uh, works here, and he had re he had spoken about a book he had written, so I picked it up to read it, and I was I was intrigued. I finished it within three days, I think, and it was a wonderful book. Um, I wasn't sure what to expect going into uh, the story because I knew that Dr. Hawk is had received his PhD in Urdu, but he also speaks wonderful English, and so I knew that I was going to get a, a cross cultural kind of look at things. Um, and then when reading it, I was just, it was really insightful to, to read a story about um, a disabled woman in village life in India. Um, and reading the story of a true minority in India, because one, she's, she comes from a Muslim background and she also is disabled. And she lives in a village, so you're looking at a woman that really does have to fight for life and um, fight for her family. And it's about her sacrifice and what she gives up in order to allow others that she loves to succeed. And it really is an insight that you, you couldn't get from an American, you couldn't get from a, a book written by an American Muslim even. It, it really has to be written by someone like Dr. Hawk. So I really recommend reading it if you want to get an insight into um, some things that you, you probably would never get to, to see unless you experience village life. Hi, so. I'm Nicole. I'm from Mozambique. And honestly, I don't think I had many expectations for the book just because I learned that in India, even if you don't expect anything, you're going to be surprised. Um, my favorite part, my absolute favorite part of the book was when the main character, Rani, um, got into this, like, she got forced into this marriage by her family, but she still found love, and even then she had a supportive husband who supported her idea of putting her child in school so he could eventually become an Urdu professor at a big university. Just seeing the vision that one small village woman who could have possibly not done anything for the rest of her life because of her disabilities. And, like seeing her reach that far and actually accomplish it because her son did get an education. Like he did get a job in the end and he did move to the city. Like seeing all of that happen and just because of like one woman's vision completely blew my mind. Dr. Hawk's book was definitely very fascinating just because I learned so much about what it is like to be a Muslim in a village in India and looking at how all these things come together has been absolutely amazing like there are things that I learned that I couldn't have even found. Would you say there's a message for the world here in this book? Okay. Well, that is a very good question. <laughs> I think that 
that, like, there's so many messages that could be, like, taken from this book, no matter, like, what type of background you're from. First of all, like, if you really want something, you should probably push for it, because it could happen. And, I don't know, like, especially with, like, the situation in the world and how people have, like, this weird, distorted view of, like, Islam and village people, like, just seeing how this book makes them so human, because, like, they deal with everyday struggles the way we do, like, they are human, like, so, I would definitely recommend it, like, seriously, when I go home after this, this is probably going to go on my shelf right next to my Khaled Hosseini books, just because I love the impact of the story was, like, so great that it's going up to, like, my it's going next to my absolute favorites. So I'm pretty sure that the first thing I do when I'll get home is, like, give my mom the book so she can read it. Um, just because, like, my mom is, like, one of the people I give books to, like, immediately after reading them because I absolutely love them. And just even then, like, all my other book room friends are probably taking it back to college with me, too. So this, the book, my book, my copy of the book is going to be in three different countries. <laughs> well, four, actually. Four different countries before it actually settles down. So, I don't know. That's great. That's great. What's your target audience? Uh, who were you writing for? When what you I think, um, whenever a writer writes a book, he should not first set a target audience, which is a myth, actually, every time. Whenever you write a book, like uh, wherever you read uh, articles about writing, they say when you write a story, you must set your target audience. But what I think, um, writing a novel is a completely different thing. Uh, a novel is a voice of your heart. It is not an art of writing or something. It's uh, what your heart says, you just draft it. And at the time of writing, because of it's a voice of your heart, and if it touches to the reader's heart, that reader is your audience. That anyone who reads it and feels it is your target audience and I think if you have some some things some component some some materials in the book that can touch anybody's heart and and it happens if anyone reads it and if it is uh, an experience of somebody which came out as, you know, in the form of a novel or in the form of a poetry or in the form of any genre of the literature if a writer has written with heart, it must touch another one's or the reader's heart. And this is the beauty of a literature. It doesn't matter who is reading it. The person who is reading it is from America, from Mozambique, or from any part of the world. If he, feel, if he or she feels uh, that uh, the story is touching the person's heart. So I think uh, this is, if it touches the heart, this story is for that person. So the target audience, whoever reads it, is the target audience, a target reader of the book. Did you face any uh, negative feedback while you were writing? Uh, did you ever feel demotivated as you were going through the process of writing? That was really challenging. Uh, whenever you do any work in the world, people, you meet some people who say, okay, you are doing well, go ahead. And you meet some people who say, mm, many people have done it before and nothing happens. And I think it doesn't work anything. So this happened to me too. When I was writing a book and I showed to my friends, some of them told me, okay, amazing, you are doing a great job. And some of them told, why are you doing this? What is the benefit of, the, uh, of this? Nothing is going to happen. And moreover, you are writing in English. You, do you dream in English? No, you dream in your mother tongue. So if you don't dream in a language, how can you write in that language? And I think it's totally a myth. Because English is a kind of language in which uh, most of the famous books are written by the second language speakers around the world. Uh, Paulo Coelho, Khaled Husseini are the names of the few, who wrote in English. And uh, uh, that is very popular and more popular than the uh, writers of the native speakers. So I think anybody can, um, I think uh, that demotivation, of course, this, this worked to me. Some people demotivated and I got demotivated, I stopped writing. But one of my colleagues, Michelle Lyons, I met at Dynamic and she told me that English or language is not a bar, it's not a hurdle for a writer. You can, the, the story is the main thing which you have. So just go with the content. 
uh, and uh, the problems of the language can be edited it's not a problem if you are making mistakes in the language that can be edited correction I will edit your work and she edited actually she edited my first draft and she she was the one who motivated me I got demotivated a little bit when my friends told why are you writing uh, when my friends told me that why are you writing in English so but later on when Michelle motivated me I got motivated and I completed imagine that you were you are a reader of this novel um, for you as if a reader of the novel what's the most impressive point in the story what what really moves would move you as a as a reader so uh, as a reader, if I am reading this story, there are few places where I felt it very deeply. Um, as a writer, I will never say that uh, there, are, there, there are a single point where I can say it was not impressive. For me, every sentence is impressive of this book. But uh, yes, there were a few places where I felt it uh, deeply and sometimes I felt like crying. Like when I talked about Sharik's mother um, in, at the latter part of this book, uh, Sharik mother's story like when Sharik was sent to the jail and uh, the disaster happened to her and that was really painful mm -hmm. and very impressive. Similarly, uh, when, uh, when uh, the, the main character of the book Rani thinks about her marriage and uh, she thinks about the compromise, she thinks about uh, um, I have no other option, that place is also heartbreaking. So there are a few places like that where, where I felt a lot. And I think as a writer, if I felt a lot, readers will feel it out. It seems, yes, yes, it seems that um, uh, every good story draws on the human emotions, the human experience uh, that is shared uh, wherever you might be from. Right. Um, do you feel that your book has a message for the world? Yes, of course, there is a message for the world and, and the, there are actually uh, different messages which you can say. One is the people who are disabled, there is no fault of them. So we should give them the equal, uh, uh, equal rights to live in this world, that's the, that's the thing. The other thing is uh, uh, right now we live in a kind of world like 21st century technological world, we have all the things that makes our uh, our life uh, luxurious. So everything is making our life luxurious and we think we are so uh, we are so involved in those things we never feel like how the life is in this world some other parts the people do not have food to eat. Here when we meet our friends we ask their choices, options. What do you like to eat and what do you prefer to eat? This is the most common question we have. But if you go to many villages and many people who live in this world, they don't have, the question is meaningless for them because they don't have choice. Whatever they get, they eat and they hardly get something to eat. So the definition changes. So we shouldn't think that everybody is as prosperous as we are. The world, the, still people are living without electricity, still people have no homes, still people work all day long to eat one time small meal and if they get, they feel graceful. So and one more thing I would like to add um, about this book when you were talking about. Uh, in this book, uh, there are two more uh, main things which I have uh, tried to convey. One is the homosexualities in madrasas uh, that uh, makes uh, students leave madrasas and because of that many people are left uneducated. And the other thing was uh, in India still people have this myth that there is no benefit of teaching girls. So girls shouldn't be educated. So th these things are also a part of the messages in this book. Obviously you are an educated man with your uh multiple master's degrees and a PhD on um, how has your education uh, formed you and your uh, other experiences formed you to be able to write this kind the thing of thing is when you study more there is a saying like if you study more you find yourself more ignorant uh, more ignorant like uh, when I studied I found that life is not 
only in that circle where I think life is broad and is grand. So if it is broad, there are small things that leave the big impacts. So as a writer, I, I try to observe those small things and I try to draft this. And Do you have one final message for uh, potential readers of your book? Uh, yes, what I would like to say, uh, it is very easy to reject any book. You can read and you can just say, ah, this is nothing. But before doing so, if you think about how hard, uh, how hard work it was for a writer to write, and how long did it take for him to write it? And what was the feeling behind the words? So if you try to uh, look through, then you will not do this. You will always think it works. So I would like the, the main message what I want to give is after reading few pages, you cannot make a decision about the book. So you must read all, full, entire book, and then if you tell your feedback or your conclusion and this is what I did in the book I gave the email address at the end of the book so uh, usually this is not the trend but I did it because I wanted to connect my readers so if the reader reads it and whatever they feel and I would like to tell you whatever you feel please give me the message so I can read it and I can uh, correct myself and a critic, you can be a, a better critic, you can be a path shower for me and this is how I can uh, understand and I can know what are the things where I'm lacking. Okay, thank you very much Dr. Hawk. So we've been uh, hearing about The Long Wait by Dr. Anwar Hawk, and uh, we encourage you all not to wait to read this impactful book. It's, it's an international book that has an impact around the world.